And why aren't you in uniform? Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 shocking kid show scandals. But if Patty's his sister, then who is Mr. Radford marrying? For this list, we'll be looking at the craziest controversies surrounding shows aimed at children, whether they were warranted or not. Did we miss any scandalous moments? Let us know in the comments. Number 20. Peer Pressure and Drunk Driving – Tiny Toon Adventures even for cartoon characters, the dangers of underage drinking are far too real. So, Blocky, how does it feel to be DWI? DWI, what's that? And Tiny Toon Adventures didn't shy away from any of it. It's bad enough showing Buster, Plucky, and Hampton sipping on a beer, but it's even worse seeing them get trashed, steal a cop car, and then drive into the aptly named Death Mountain. Suffice it to say, it went a bit too far for a children's-oriented program. In the end, the only thing this PSA accomplished was getting the entire episode banned for over 20 years. I hope the kids got the message. Yeah, drinking's uncool. So do we get to do a funny episode tomorrow? I hope so. Nowadays, the segment is readily accessible on streaming and DVD releases. That doesn't make it any more appealing, though. Number 19. Prejudice Against Tinky Winky – Teletubbies Tinky Winky was very surprised to see Dipsy's hat. Certain groups out there will go to any lengths to prevent what they perceive as gay advocacy from appearing on television. Unfortunately, back in 1999, the Teletubbies came under their scope. But now one Teletubby, the little purple figure carrying a handbag, is the target of Jerry Falwell's conservative religious magazine. Controversy arose when the conservative activist, Jerry Falwell, alleged that the purple character Tinky Winky was a covert gay role model. The reason for this is because, while the character is assumed to be male, he carries around what looks like a woman's handbag. Uh-oh, Tinky Winky! Uh-oh, Lala! The BBC and the production company behind Teletubbies clarified that it was simply a magic bag, and Tinky Winky wasn't gay or straight, simply a character in a children's series. Number 18. Bob the Builder Drops the F-Bomb? Bob the Builder You know whenever you think you hear something, but it sounds like something else? Well, that's precisely what happened to this British, hard-hat-wearing staple of children's stop-motion animation. During the Season 2 episode, Wallpaper Wendy, Bob the Builder attempts to decorate the inside of a house to mixed results. During this segment, Bob mumbles as he struggles with the task. <laughs> These mumbles resulted in some parents claiming to hear the frustrated builder swearing. While it was stated that this mumbling was simply being misinterpreted, the obscure lines were muted for later broadcasts. <laughs> Number 17. Kermit Gets Fired – The Muppets Franchise Kermit, Miss Piggy, and the others are about as unproblematic as you can get. But the puppeteers behind them are a different story. Why are you wearing each other's clothes? If it happens outside of work, we don't owe him an explanation. For 27 years, Steve Whitmire continued the Muppets' legacy as the performer of several iconic characters, most famously Kermit himself. However, parent company Disney alleged that many of those years were filled with outrageous demands and unacceptable workmanship. That, that, that's insane, do you hear what you're saying? That's that's insane. Insane. It reached a tipping point in late 2016 when Whitmire was terminated from the Muppets altogether. He didn't go quietly, though. Whitmire vehemently refuted Disney's story and claimed he was let go over union disagreements and other minor gripes. And what they really wanted was for me to frame this as I moved on and that I had retired, and I, it was just disingenuous. I couldn't bring myself to do it." No matter which side is true, odds are Whitmire won't be returning to Kermit anytime soon. Movie's over, people! Go home! That is a wrap! Number 16. Scary Spiders – Peppa Pig Like most kids her age, Peppa is frightened of arachnids. <laughs> But with some help from George, she ends the episode Mr. Skinny Legs thinking they aren't so bad. 
It's a nice messaging doll. The issue is that some spiders are feared for very good reasons. Ah! Mr. Skinny Legs is big, isn't he? <laughs> for example, in Australia, where there's a whole bunch of creepy crawlies carrying lethal venom, there, the episode drew significant controversy for minimizing the threat of spiders, especially among young, impressionable kids. Pepper loves playing tea parties. <laughs> Here's your tea, Mr. Skinny Legs. Eventually, the Australian Broadcasting Corporation deemed the episode inappropriate and completely banned it from the country. Apparently, they agreed that spiders are to be feared after all. Number 15. Adoption Jokes. You can't do that on television. Ironically, this show's title is exactly what some viewers said about a few of its tasteless jokes. In the episode bluntly titled Adoption, several sketches made very questionable gags at the expense of orphans and foster care. I don't know if I'm her daughter. In particular, one scene featured a politician adopting a kid, using him to do chores, and then trying to return him to the orphanage. Yeah, he's done everything that pretty well uh, had to be done. So yeah, you come over here and you, you take him back. What? What do you mean adoption is forever? Instead of playful, the whole thing came across as mean-spirited and out of touch. So it's no surprise that reportedly, adoption only aired twice before being yanked off American airwaves indefinitely. Years later, even one of the show's creators admitted that these jokes crossed a line. How do you get away with it? I don't know. Luck, I guess. <laughs> Number 14. Homophobia – Mighty Morphin Power Rangers In most episodes, these spandex-clad heroes fought the bad guys, learned a lesson, and saved the day. However, behind the scenes, one of them was fighting a very different kind of battle. This is Billy, all systems go! In the years since his departure from the series, original Blue Ranger David Yost has revealed that he faced intense homophobia on the set of the hit 90s program. Basically, I just felt like I was continually being told I'm not worthy of where I am because I'm quote unquote a gay person and I'm not supposed to be an actor and you can't be a superhero. Eventually, the constant ridicule forced Yost to exit the show without even filming a goodbye. Instead, Power Rangers used archival recordings and a ham-fisted aging plotline to write Billy out without his actor. I've made a really important decision. I'll miss you all, but I'm going to stay here on Aquatalk with Sestria. I think I finally found someone I can really relate to. I knew you would, Billy. Knowing all that Yost endured makes revisiting this franchise early days much more difficult. Number 13. A Different Kind of Street – Sesame Street on October 16, 2011, Elmo and the others woke up to some very unwelcome guests in their neck of the woods. Is Big Bird feeling okay? Oh, uh, I don't know. My, my tummy feels a little like there are, there are butterflies in it. Someone had hacked Sesame Street's official YouTube page and replaced the kid-friendly content with videos for a much, much older audience. Hey, what's going on? And that's putting it lightly. Before you ask, no, apparently none of them included Sesame Street characters. That's not Sesame Street. The only silver lining is that the lewd content was presumably only live for about 20 minutes. Afterward, the channel was taken down and later reverted back to the rightful owners. Thankfully, Sesame Street's YouTube page has stayed safe for all ages ever since. Number 12. LGBTQ Plus Content – The Arthur Franchise on two separate occasions, this classic cartoon went out of its way to normalize same-sex couples. These are our frogs. Fifi loves to eat. She eats almost all the food, and these are all pictures of our family. The first instance occurred in 2005, when the spin-off postcards from Buster came under fire for depicting children with two mothers. So Gillian's your mom too? She's my stepmom. Boy, that's a lot of moms. Even though there was no use of the word lesbian, it was still banned from several American television stations. The flagship series faced similar resistance in 2019 when Mr. Ratburn married another man. Once again, there were little to no overt references to the same-sex aspects of the storyline. But if Patty's his sister, then… Who is Mr. Ratburn marrying? <laughs> But sadly, that didn't stop the state of Alabama from refusing to air the episode altogether. Number 11. Cancelled Creator – The Loud House 
In the middle of its highly rated second season, this show made some noise for all the wrong reasons. The series creator, Chris Savino, was abruptly terminated from Nickelodeon following several long-standing sexual misconduct allegations. A week later, Savino owned up to his actions and expressed regret over how he handled the situation. Since The Loud House was based on the experiences of its creator, many were skeptical about how it would continue without him. Luckily, the show bounced back from this PR disaster with more laughs than ever before. Even without Savino, The Loud House has continued to thrive. We've done a little restructuring, and from now on, we're calling the shots. Number 10. War and Conflict – Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood It's somewhat poetic that an arc named Conflict so thoroughly lived up to its name. It all started in 1983, when Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood spent a whole week's worth of episode discussing the realities of war, death, and violence. I'm glad I didn't live there. I am too. I wouldn't like to live where they're having a war. We've never had a war here in make-believe, have we? To be fair, the show was no stranger to tackling difficult subject matter. But this frank examination of the current political climate was simply too much for some. Conflict aired for the last time in 1996, and since then, it's been left out of just about every official release of the show. But we've never had a war here, have we? Well, not that I know of. Have we, Daddy? If it weren't for fans spearheading a restoration effort, there's a chance these controversial episodes would have been lost to time. Number 9. Identity Panic – SpongeBob SquarePants And why aren't you in uniform? Who lives in a pineapple under the sea? SpongeBob SquarePants. And who is also supposedly a secret gay advocate? Potentially everyone's favorite underwater sponge. In 2005, a wide range of popular children's shows collaborated for a charity music video. Sponsored by the We Are The Family Foundation, it sought to promote diversity and tolerance in the spirit of Sister Sledge's We Are Family. We are family. Get up everybody and say cool, right? But no, upon its release, conservative religious groups attacked the organization. While series creator Steven Hillenburg had denied that SpongeBob was gay years earlier, he stated that he considered the character, quote, somewhat asexual. So much for a faux morality panic. Hmm. I sense no danger here. Number 8. Controversial Tweets – Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Whenever you're an actor for a children's show, there is a common expectation that you'll have a somewhat tame public image. However, it seems that Jason Biggs, who played Leonardo in TMNT, didn't get the memo. And you're always whining. Poor me. Nobody understands me. The actor shared his thoughts on Twitter about the Republican National Convention and the private parts of Ann Romney, Paul Ryan, and Jana Little. You gotta control your temper. Until then, we just can't trust you. Nickelodeon quickly apologized for the comments, and the incident led to Jason being replaced on the show from season two onwards. Dude, this is awful. Number seven, potential Islamophobia. Fireman Sam. Oh, just one more report to go. Careful, Elvis. Children's cartoons are mostly expected to contain lessons about moral and societal values. But this incident may make you consider if Fireman Sam was secretly preaching intolerance. This episode of the British animated cartoon first aired in 2014, but the error only came to light in 2016. I won't slip! <laughs> One of the characters enters a room and slips on some papers, one of which looks like a page from the Quran. Mattel came out saying it was an unfortunate error when a member of the production company thought they were putting scribbles on a page. Despite the apology, people were up in arms about it on social media. And I'll get a mop. Number 6. Censored Dance – Steven Universe What can I do for you? In a show that includes a lot of LGBTQ themes, you would think that the network that commissioned it would want to maintain that vision around the world. Apparently not in the United Kingdom. During the episode We Need to Talk, the characters Rose Quartz and Pearl dance romantically with each other. If you saw this in the US, you would have gotten the whole dance, including a moment where the two are very close to each other. 
But if you saw it in the UK, you instead would have gotten some alternative close-ups omitting that small segment. Fans were outraged, but Cartoon Network stood by their decision, saying that it was in line with the UK rating system. I can't believe I got that on video! What on earth was that?! Number 5. Post Troubles, Blue Peter. The 20th century is almost over, and it will be remembered for the way in which scientific discoveries transformed the lives of the people who lived through it. When a show is framed as family friendly, the cast and crew are under a lot of scrutiny. This is the case for Blue Peter, the longest running children's TV series globally, which has had its fair share of hiccups. In 2007, a Blue Peter editor was fired after the show rigged a cat naming contest, but this was far from the most troublesome issue. One of the most notable involved former presenter Richard Bacon leading up to Blue Peter's 40th anniversary in the late 90s. Tabloids revealed that Bacon reportedly did cocaine during his tenure on the show. You'll uh, no doubt have heard that Richard is no longer on the program. Yes, he agrees he had to leave, and like you, we are really going to miss him. This revelation sparked media outrage, prompting a response from the head of children's programming at the BBC, resulting in him being let go from the program. I got fired for punctuality. Because if you take a lot of coke, you're always late for things. So. <laughs> Number four. Flashing images cause mass mania. Pokemon. When companies translate a foreign cartoon to English, sometimes they choose to censor certain bits, like a particularly infamous joke during a beach episode in this show's season one. Unfortunately, something got left in another time. During the Pokemon episode, Electric Soldier Porygon, Ash and the gang get stuck inside a machine and have to fight Team Rocket and Porygon. Towards the end, an explosion animation featured red and blue flashes happening in quick succession, which triggered seizures in children with epilepsy. And then the news of it reportedly created mass hysteria. It of course wasn't the intention of Japanese animators to harm anyone, and us either, which is why we're not going to show the scene in question, but the episode was understandably pulled from broadcast. <laughs> Number 3. Dan Schneider's Legacy – Various In 2018, Nickelodeon parted ways with one of their most prolific creators of all time. But despite his resume, odds are Dan Schneider will only be remembered for the mountain of allegations levied against him. While Nickelodeon's firing only explicitly cited his quick temper, many insiders have come out accusing Schneider of repeated sexual harassment. This included former iCarly star Jeanette McCurdy, who spent a section of her memoir detailing her harrowing experiences with someone only referred to as the creator. Hey, I'm Carly. I'm Sam. And we like to draw families on our toes. Observe! Given the extent of the charges, many fans have also pointed to scenes in Schneider's work that have not aged well at all. As a result, it's unlikely Schneider or his legacy will ever recover. Number 2. Elmo Actor Allegations – Sesame Street Oh, hi, Abby! Hi! hi. <laughs> oh, what's, what's Abby doing? Oh, coloring. Oh, wow, it's pretty. Sesame Street can't seem to get a break when it comes to controversies. In one instance, a controversy arose over celebrity guest Katy Perry's dress during a music video, causing the segment to be removed. You wanna play, so I wore dress up clothes. Then there's the already mentioned hacking of their YouTube channel. All parents really want is to make sure that their children are safe watching these shows, so when dangerous claims are made, it can cause panic. Kevin Clash, the actor behind the popular Sesame Street character Elmo, had several extremely serious allegations of sexual impropriety leveled against him in 2012. These claims garnered a lot of media attention, and despite the accusations eventually being legally dismissed, Clash left the series. Come on, Abby, let's go fly the airplane! Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Terrible Reality – Kid Nation There are reasons why there are stringent laws and regulations regarding children working in the film and television industry. Sure, it might make for exciting programming, but the aim isn't to scar them for life. 
The cash prize reality show Kid Nation sent a group of 40 children of various ages into the desert, challenging them to create a functioning society. The crew was informed to be as little involved as possible, allowing these vulnerable kids to experience genuinely distressing events. I'm really homesick. The disturbing premise resembles William Golding's novel, Lord of the Flies, and audiences agreed. Unfortunately, the parents were apparently poorly informed regarding what was involved, and the backlash meant it only lasted one season. It sounds like they didn't clue you in on much then. Yeah, I, I also probably wasn't listening very well, because uh, I, was, I was eight. <laughs>